So I soaked peas yesterday, planning to plant them today, but it's raining its balls off, but I already soaked them, so I'm gonna garden in the rain. Um, taking these tubs, I'm gonna fill the bottom with Lika, then I'm gonna use uh, planting soil, planturiord is what they call it. I get it at the recycling center. It's mixed with compost and it's just good and finished and I grow pretty much all of my stuff in it and it works really, really well for me. Um, and sometimes I get weird volunteer plants. So like I've gotten like strawberry spinach and stuff out of it. So like, eh, there's not zero chance I got a pumpkin plant out of the soil. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but there's definitely one in the greenhouse that I have no idea where it came from. So, um, yeah, while it may not be the cleanest, uh, sometimes you get free vegetables, so I'm okay with it. Um, I'm gonna plant these out and then I'll show you the finished products. It's weird. Uh, these are just the Lika balls that I'm gonna put in the bottom, and then I'm gonna plant peas and some weird veggies. I'm just using this plastic concrete mixing tub that I got for like seven bucks at the store. Um, it's about 50 liters. So it's a good like 18 inches deep. And instead of drilling holes in them, because I don't feel like doing that, what I do is I put leak a block in the bottom so that there's a, basically a water reservoir that it can drain through and then you can still aerate the roots. And I don't have to deal with drilling holes because sometimes you don't have time and sometimes the plastic is cheap and it breaks and then it's useless. So uh, this is my little weird gardening hack. That took about 30 liters of soil to fill up and now I'm going to transplant some red Russian kale that I forgot about in the greenhouse and direct sow some svatrut, which is a black salsify. Um, and you grow it, you can eat the greens, and then you can eat the roots. Um, my hope is to use this as a burdock substitute um, in my New Year's soup when I make ozoni, um, because I cannot get burdock to grow for me here. I do not know why. And then I'm going to plant some kombucha, uh, or kabucha. I'm a bad Japanese kid who always forgets how to say this, but I think it's kabucha. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting rained on. <laughs> <laughs> and my brain has stopped working. Um, but I, it's 108 days until our first frost date. And these take 75 to 100. So this is a big fat gamble putting seeds in the ground. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. I've never grown salsify before. And I didn't know what the seeds looked like. Um, they look like little sticks. So they're kind of funny. Um, and my plan is just to cover them a little bit in this open bit of the bed. Um, and hope for the best and we will see what happens. And then I'm not gonna water this, I'm just gonna let the rain do it. And then back here you can see that I planted some peas. I just dug a trench, sprinkled the peas in, and then covered them up with my hands. And then I put a couple of pumpkin, the pumpkin seeds here, if I remember where, here they are. Um, and the best way for me to get germination is to put them so that they're skinny side up. If you lay them flat, they have a tendency to rot. But if you plant them tall and skinny, then uh, they tend to actually get it together. Uh, most of the time for my cricubits, I will start them on a paper towel, in um, just a wet paper towel in the house. Um, in a Tupperware or in a plastic baggie um, and let them get started to ensure that they actually get it together. Um, I do that with my peppers as well. Um, not tomatoes. That is a mistake. <laughs> uh, but since it's raining today, I'm just putting it out and we're doing an experiment and we're hoping for the best and we will see what's going on. And then I planted the pumpkins on this side because there's this existing trellis from where the previous owners of the house put in a rose. And so I'm hoping that if the pumpkin gets it together, it'll grow up this trellis and then we can do a little bit of vertical growing and then it's got the same over here. There was a rose bush here as well, but I took it out and I put uh, red currant cuttings a couple of years ago, just stuck cuttings of red currants in the ground. They rooted and I get a couple, of, a handful of currants every year from that. So the longer it gets developed, the better it's gonna be, but it also has this trellis that's doing nothing. So there are uh, two more pumpkin seeds here, hoping at least one of them makes it. And then we'll go up the trellis and these black salsify are now getting covered and in the ground. And we will see what happens. Um, hopefully it will work out. It might not. And 
that's our kaolin, same thing. So these are mirror images, but the same. So they have a kale on the outside, pumpkin on the inside, peas in the back, and then salsify in this kind of like open zone um, to get down. And salsify potentially grows for two years before you can harvest it. So that's fun. These tomatoes that have some purple kale, and a spetz call, which is just like a pointy cabbage, um, are also growing in the exact same method as outside with the leka underneath and just in a plastic tub. Super easy. Um, this one has cucumbers and nasturtiums and some broccoli. And uh, I think that's all that's in here. Oh, and my mystery pumpkin. My mystery <laughs> pumpkin is in here. Um, so I have the cucumbers coming up the back and we got our first cucumber that's coming in right now. They're nice and long and crazy, and hopefully we will get to eat that in a salad later this week. And then I have uh, two tomato plants back there with a nasturtium that's the same thing. Just flika and soil, and uh, put a couple of bamboo canes to help support the tomatoes as they are getting bigger. Uh, one is a beefsteak, and the other is a sweet 100 cherry that I uh, have been taking suckers off of. And this is the suckers <laughs> that uh, made baby suckers, and I've been pulling suckers off and planting them out, and we're just getting tomatoes. So we are getting tomatoes everywhere, and hopefully soon we will be able to eat them because they will be ripe and not just a bounty of fried green tomatoes. And now I am sopping wet mess and very dirty. So I'm going to go inside and try to process some spinach that I harvested yesterday when it wasn't raining. Um, have a good day and happy 4th of July because it's a Independence Day in America. And I decided to start my, I guess, independent victory garden educational YouTube channel on Independence Day. There's no symbolism there. It's fine. Um, yeah, but happy 4th and uh, keep gardening. Try to grow your stuff and uh, learn something. And if you fail, it's cool. You learn from failure. Thanks. Bye. So I'm gonna harvest this little baby kale that's in here, just so that this tomato <laughs> has more space. Um, so yeah, this is a spetzkal. It is just a pointy little cabbage, and this will probably be hilariously small, but I'm gonna use all of the plant, so it won't be as sad. I'm going to take this bucket of chaos and turn it into a steak dinner with sautéed cabbage and roasted potatoes and a side of peas. If there's not enough peas after I shell these ones that I harvested from the garden, then I will add some corn to that just to beef it up. Um, and then I'm going to make a chorizo and kale uh, soup with a chicken stock and lemon and then onion. So yeah, that is the plan. And I will show you what it looks like when it's done.